So there's this scene in the movie The Matrix where, you know, Neo just gets unplugged from The Matrix and, you know, he falls asleep and he wakes up the next day and he's eating breakfast and uh, they serve him like this soup type of thing or something. And he's like, what is this? And then one of the guys tells him, well, it's a, it's a mixture of all of, of vitamins and minerals and everything the body needs, right? And, and, the, and then this other guy tells him he doesn't have everything the body needs. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I just wanted to open up with that scene, you know, and, and just ask you guys a question. You know, food is important to us, right? Like, like uh, what we eat, you know, like in the movie The Matrix... You know, they they were living in a fallen world where they they had to just survive off just the bare essentials, right? So so I want you to think, what are your favorite foods? You know, like for me, I love donuts. I love donuts, man. They have them every Sunday at, at my church service, and I like to eat donuts. And sometimes I'll go to the donut shop in the morning, and I'll buy myself like three or four donuts, and, <laughs> and I'll just pick out on donuts once in a while. And and you know, but you know what I really love? My my favorite dessert of all time is is a, a piece of chocolate raspberry cheesecake. You know, I'll, I'll buy it every year for my birthday or special occasions because it's my favorite. It's my favorite in the whole world. And you know, like on death row or or like how they say like if you could have a if you could have your last meal, like if you were about to die, you know, what would you, what would you eat? Right? Like for me, it, it I, just give me some tacos de adobada, you know, some a top shelf margarita some horchata, some enchiladas, ooh, man, you know, like, I'm already getting, <laughs> I'm already getting hungry just thinking about it, right, and, 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 and usually I don't drink alcohol, but you, you go, you go to the store, and you see all the wine bottles on the shelves from all over the world, and they're all packaged, so tempting, you know, and they have, like, a beautiful story about, oh, these grapes were picked by virgins, or <laughs> whatever, you know, and obviously I'm joking, but, I mean, let's, let's face it, we all have to eat to survive, right? And we, and we, and you know, here in America, um, we don't have to just eat the bare essentials. We got all kinds of food that we could eat and enjoy. Um, but at what point does eating become overeating? You know what I mean? At what point does eating too much become a sin? Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the sin of gluttony. The sin of gluttony. Gluttony is kind of a strange word that we don't use today in our in our modern um, language very often. Yeah, uh, and but basically, what does what does gluttony mean? You know, glut, gluttony is is kind of like you could say it's indulging yourself in food or drink. That's what we normally think of it, or some kind of fleshly appetite that we have. Um, and overindulging, overindulging yourself, like you're you're just eating to the point where you almost become sick and. And it's actually unhealthy for you, you know. But let me, let me read it, uh, from you a verse out of the Bible, um, from the book of Deuteronomy, uh, which is the second law. Um, it's the I think it's the fifth book in the Bible. And I'm going to read from Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 18 through 21, to open up this message. So let's read this. <clears throat> the Bible says, "If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father," or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him will not hearken unto them. Then shall his father and mother lay hold on him, and bring him out unto the elders of the city, and unto the gate of this place. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of the city shall stone him with stones that he die, and shall put this evil away from among you. And all Israel should, shall hear and fear. Now, when I read this, when I first read this to myself, you know, when I was writing this message, is, you know, I said, well, you know, they, they called this guy a glutton, but, but, you know, this had nothing to do with overeating, this law of Moses. You know, this is about a rebellious son who just won't listen to his parents. He's, go, he's always constantly going against him. And, you know, they called him a glutton and a drunkard. You know, and so God considered that this sin was so bad that it actually carried the death penalty, right? The sin of disobeying your parents to the point where you, um, you're so rebellious that, you know, they take you out before the whole city and, and, and 
shouldn't shame you for being a drunkard and a glutton. And uh, when I think of a rebellious son or a rebellious child, right, you know, I think of a young punk who's, who's, who's going out at night, he's partying, he's drinking, he's getting into drugs, he's getting into um, fornication and sleeping with women that aren't his wife. And when his parents try to warn him to stop, and they try to teach him and say, hey, you know, and, and he just yells at them, maybe hits them, and he doesn't listen to them. And don't get me wrong, you know, this, I don't think this verse just applies to men. I know it's, it's specifically talking about a son, but I think you could apply this to young girls as well. You know, the young girl who just sneaks out of the house, or, or maybe the young girl just leaves the house in, dressed inappropriately, and her father tells her, hey, Young lady, you know, you are not leaving the house dressed like that. And, you know, she does it anyway. She just ignores her father, ignores her mother. You know, her mother tells her, no, 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 that guy you're going out with, he's bad. You know, that's a bad boy. He's trouble. Stay away from him. But, you know, she goes out with him anyways, ends up getting pregnant, whatever. The Bible says, I think that's the sin of gluttony. You know, so gluttony you know in our in our in our sense of the word is is just we think of it as overeating you know we think of people who are considered we consider gluttons or just obese but gluttony has more to do with a rebellious attitude according to the bible in other words you know our fleshly appetites when we let our fleshly appetites get out of control right when we want more than just what the body needs right to the point where we're causing destruction to ourselves right and to those around us and we're becoming rebellious to our authority figures like our parents and God you know so I, I want to look at a few other verses in Deuteronomy since we're already there you know we started uh, I want you to flip back to chapter 8 you know and I want to examine just three verses just really quick to try to understand how we could avoid this sin of gluttony we don't want to be rebellious we don't because it's a serious sin, you know, it carries the death penalty. And, you know, I also want to ask the question, why do, why do we fall into this sin? You know, because any one of us at any time could become a glutton, right? It doesn't necessarily have to do with eating, right? Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 says, and I'm just going to read three verses. It says, All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe and do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Verse number 2, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep the, his commandments or no. Verse 3, And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Now the reason I chose these three verses, specific verses here, is because with food being so important to our lives, you know, with food... The Bible says that we don't just live off food, right? Like the example I gave in the movie The Matrix, it, even food itself doesn't have everything that we need, you know, because we are also we also have a spirit inside of us. God created a soul inside of our our fleshly bodies that that doesn't live off uh, food that we you know eat. In our bodies that food is for our bodies but we also have a spirit that needs food and that spirit is new as uh, what's the word um, nu uh, nutrient <laughs> I can't think of the word that spirit is um, nutrient gives us nutrition the way we get our nutrition is through the Word of God that's how we feed our spirit I remember um, there's a movie I used to watch when I was a kid uh, called The Nutty Professor. Maybe you've heard of it. It's, it's a comedy movie about a fat guy who he just loves to eat all the time. You know, there was a scene where, you know, he, he's got a bucket of fried chicken. He's got ice cream, a tub of a whole tub of ice cream next to him, right? And just all kinds of snacks littered. And he's sitting on the couch watching TV. And this, this poor guy, he just got rejected by a woman he likes. And 
So he thought, you know, I'm going to just comfort myself with food. And, you know, I've been there before. You know, I've been rejected by a woman and, and I've turned to food. So I, I, could, I could understand where this guy's coming from, right? Like, because we think, oh, man, if I just buy, buy my favorite food, you know, it'll make me feel better, right? <laughs> and then <laughs> this poor guy, he's at home, he's crying, he's got all this, his favorite food, he's eating it. And, and I've been there and, and, and you eat it and it's good, but it's like, man, it doesn't fix my, my broken heart, right? <laughs> and, but anyway, he sees this commercial on, on TV and, and this commercial for, I think, a gym or something and, and about losing weight. And, it, and it's funny because it seems like it's talking to him I'm like, hey, are you, are you eating to try to comfort yourself? You know, what you really need to do is get on a diet because you know? <laughs> that food's not going to make you happy. What's going to make you happy is you need to come to the gym. Um, and go on a diet so anyway long story short you know he he gets motivated by this and he, he jumps up and he says forget this food and he goes out and he's like I'm gonna go buy me uh, some gym clothes and I'm gonna get in the gym because I want to impress this girl right <laughs> like that was his motivation right like I'm gonna get in shape then then she'll like me right if I get in shape and I lose some weight and you know the movie's right that you know food is not gonna make you happy right but what this movie doesn't tell you is that, you know, this woman is not going to bring you happiness either. You know, even if you were to lose the weight, impress the girl, you know, and, and, and there's another side note I wanted to make is, you know, you got to be doing things for the right reasons, right? Like, if you, if you want to lose weight to impress a girl, that's the wrong reason, okay? But anyway, that's a side note. Um, and so, you know, whatever, whatever you think might bring you happiness to your life, like, oh, I'm going to get married, or oh, I'm going to go get with this woman, or oh, I'm, I want to go sleep with this really beautiful woman, then I'll be happy, or, or I'm going to go buy myself a piece of land, and I'm going to, and I'm going to uh, live off the grid, then I'll be happy, if, I, if I'm, I'll be more free, right, or whatever you think might bring happiness to your life, whatever fleshly appetite that you have, if you think that that material thing is going to bring you happiness, let me tell you, First of all, it's not. And second of all, you're endangering yourself to falling into the sin of gluttony. Right? Because remember, that, that thing doesn't have everything, the, everything you need, everything the body needs. Your spirit lives off every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Have you heard of fasting in the Bible? Jesus fasted. Um, the apostles fasted. Um, all throughout the Old Testament, people fasted. When people die, people fast. They don't eat. Fasting is very important in the Bible. And, you know, even the Bible says it's not, it's not optional. Fasting is, in, is, is a commandment of God that we should fast. You don't have to fast every day, but once in a while you need to fast. And you know that there's certain times in the Bible that God specifically commanded people to fast. And you don't have to turn there, but I want to read for you uh, a few verses in the Old Testament from the prophet Joel <clears throat> in chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, where God commanded somebody to fast. He commanded the prophet Joel to fast. He says, Therefore also now saith the Lord, so this is God speaking, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. So he's commanding the prophet Joel to fast and to turn to God, or excuse me, I think if you want to get the context of this, I think Joel's telling the people of Israel that God said that, hey, they need to turn back to him. But anyway, verse 13 says, and rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. So look, you know, the Bible says that God doesn't want our money. You know, he, he doesn't want um, our, because there's a lot of, in the Old Testament, you know, they gave, they gave sacrifices to the Lord. And, and, you know, people think that, you know, oh, man, if I just give up this, this thing, you know, what, maybe if I uh, give to charity, you know. But God says, I don't want your money. I want your heart. The Bible says, rend your heart not your garments. God doesn't want your material things. He wants, he wants your heart and soul. The first commandment of the Bible says, love the, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, and thy mind. That's what's important to God is our heart. 
not our body. You know, he'll accept you if you're overweight. He'll accept you if you're, if you're poor, if you're ugly, if you're old, if you're a man or a woman. He'll accept you. What he wants is your heart. That's what God wants. So fasting and weeping and mourning, you know, why is it so important to fast in the Bible? Because it reminds us that we don't live off bread alone, right? If you fast for any length of time, even one meal, right? Even I, I've fasted, <laughs> uh, I've been trying to fast lately. I just got into it and, you know, just one meal. You try to skip one meal and, man, I'm hungry. I'm starving. And, and that reminds that reminds you of, hey, you know, my body's weak and, 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 and you but you want to focus. You want to focus. See, because there's not, like, anybody can go on a diet, right? Anybody could say, hey, look, I'm going to go on a diet. I'm going to only eat uh, fruits and vegetables and, and healthy food, right? But, you know, it's what, what's important when you when you fast is not, not, not that you're changing your diet. I mean, that's good. But what's important is that you focus on God. You keep your, your focus on obeying the commandments. And, and you help your fast remind you that, hey, just like just like my body needs food, my spirit needs the Word of God. I need to be reading my Bible. I need to be obeying the commandments of God because if I don't, I'm in danger of becoming a glutton, which carries a death penalty, right? It's dangerous. So, see, a lot of people wonder why, wonder why like, they, they tell me, hey, Sean, you know, why, why do you seem so happy, you know? Why, you, you lost your girlfriend, bro. You're single. You know, the woman that you love, she doesn't love you anymore. She she hates, she doesn't even want to talk to you. She ghosted you, bro. You need to move on. Get yourself another girlfriend, you know? <laughs> Look at this woman in the red dress. Look at her over there. Look at this girl in the yoga pants, you know? You, 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 must, have, you must have came upon some kind of money or something. Like, how are you so happy, right? And you know, the thing is, is, I learned that you know I don't live off bread alone. I don't I don't get my happiness from a woman. I don't get my happiness from material things and food. My happiness comes from me serving God. You know that's where my happiness comes from. I don't I learned not to live on bread alone. You know over and over and over again in the Bible there's times of famine. You know when people are starving. And see that that's going to happen in our lives. There's going to come a time in your life when something that you're used to, some physical thing that you're used to, whether it be a relationship with somebody or, or maybe you're used to living a, a, a luxurious lifestyle because you have a good, uh, a good job or something, there's, there can be times in your life when you lose that. You lose that relationship. Maybe that person leaves you. Maybe that person dies. Maybe they move or, or maybe you lose your job. Whatever the case may be, right? Maybe, maybe the government shuts everything down and, and, and puts everybody into quarantine, right? And, and in a way, you kind of have to go through this famine, right? And you see what's going to happen in your life is if, is if you put too much emphasis on those material things, those, those appetites of your flesh to satisfy your own flesh, and you neglect to read your Bible, you don't go to church, you neglect Jesus Christ, you know, you're going to become spiritually dead. Just like if you didn't eat for three days or, or a week, you would die. Your, your body would de- start to decay and start to eat itself and eventually you die. So try as you may to, li- to live uh, your life and have your fill of all your fleshly appetites and all of the desires. And, and um, you know, it's, it's never going to fully satisfy you. You know, as, even, even children, like I see children over here at this park, even children, they're such a blessing, right? And, and they become such a joy. And, and, this guy, and, and one of my brothers in church today told me, he said, man, I miss my grandkids, right? I need them. They, they lighten up my day. And, you know, they do. And, and God bless children. They, they're so special. And they do lighten, us up, lighten, up, lighten up our day. But we have to understand that, you know, if, if these children were taken away from us somehow, some way, you know, that can't bring us down, right? We can't be relying on our children or our grandchildren to bring us happiness our happiness has to come from serving God and the only thing that's going to satisfy our soul and our spirit and give us true peace in our heart is Jesus Christ you know and anytime you sin it's like eating poison imagine if you ate something rotten you know I've I've done that before and then you get and then you get skin or not skin uh, you get stomach aches stomach pains Um, it can make you real sick could put you in the hospital 
And, and here's the thing, if you've never eaten the spiritual food, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right, your soul is craving for it. You know, a lot, a lot of the times in the Old Testament, Jesus talks about being born again, about renewing your spirit, right, rejuvenating your spirit. The Bible says when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, the Holy Spirit enters you. Right, so it like it, it it rejuvenates you. You become alive, spiritually alive, you know. Because you say, "Hey, Sean, you know, how do I get this spiritual food? Right? How how do I be, get that peace in my heart?" Well, the first thing you need to do is stop relying off just food alone for your happiness, and realize that man does not live off bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And you need to realize that when you die. There's a soul inside of you, and that soul will stand before judgment in God. And He knows every single sin that you've ever committed, you know. And unless that you you've received this spiritual food that Jesus gives, that only Jesus can give, you receive the uh, the body of Jesus Christ inside you. Your spirit's dead, and when your body dies, your soul will die with it. Which is, you know, our soul was created by God to be indestructible, you know. So it won't just turn to dust like our like our flesh will. You know, when, when our flesh dies, it's just going to turn back to dust and that's it. It's, it's gone. But when your di- body dies, or excuse me, when your soul dies, which was created indestructible, you die without ever receiving Jesus Christ, the spiritual food that nourishes you. You're going to go to hell. You'll be tormented there forever and ever. You know, and, and I'm not preaching a, a message. You know, and the beautiful thing about Jesus is you only have to... You only have to receive him one time, right? Like, like we eat. When we eat, we constantly get hungry again, again and again. But when you receive Jesus Christ, you only need to receive him one time. Imagine that. If, if, imagine if you could pick up a piece of food and eat it and say, Hmm, that was so good. And you would never be hungry ever again. You never have to eat anything. Now, a lot of times we think, Oh, well, man, <laughs> I, but I like to eat cheesecake. That's good. But, but. Imagine, you know, if I could tell you, hey, look, if you can receive Jesus Christ in your spirit, your spirit will never hunger again. Your spirit will be saved. You know, your spirit um, will be will be alive, eternal, forever. It will never die. You know, how amazing. You know, and all we have to do is believe in Jesus because he feeds our spirit. He's our spiritual, he's our spiritual food. Now, with the bread that we eat in our bodies, you know, that 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 goes away, but but the bread that Jesus Christ offers us will never die. It'll never go away. So remember, you know, next time you sit down at your next meal, I want you to remember that we don't live off bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And I want you to thank God for the food that He's given you, and I want you to, and I want you to also remember that. We don't live off bread alone, right? Because if, if you keep those things in your mind, and I'm going to end my message with this, the importance of eating food and, and fasting and how you know the sin of gluttony is not necessarily overeating, but it's re- rebelling against the commandments of God. But instead, if we put our, our physical appetite, or excuse me, our spiritual appetite above our physical appetite, because, you know, our, our physical appetite is eventually going to die, right? Our physical bodies are eventually going to die. But if we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, our spirit will never die, right? And ultimately, we can avoid be, ever going to hell. All we need to do is receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. So, anyway, I want to close here. Um, if my friends, if you're if you're struggling with the sin of, of the of any sin of the flesh, any appetite, you know, just like uh, that guy said in the movie The Matrix, it doesn't have everything the body needs. If you're if you're if you're struggling with any kind of sin of gluttony and re, and rebelling, and it's causing you to rebel against uh, the commandments of God, I urge you to you know take a fast. You know, you can always fast and help yourself remind yourself of how weak your spirit is. That without God, you know, we're nothing but dust in the wind. So, you know, what we need to do, guys, and what I want to encourage you today is to obey the commandments of God. You know, because God provides for us. He will provide for us. He says, if you obey my commandments, 
I'll give you everything you need. It might it might not be it might not be everything you desire, your flesh your your fleshly appetites desire, but it'll be everything that you need to survive and live forever in in, in God's holy eternal kingdom. Anyway, that's my message, guys. Um, tried to preach on the sin of gluttony, and uh, you guys have a wonderful day. It's kind of overcast here in Denver, but I'm gonna enjoy this day. It's a beautiful day that God's given us, and thank you for listening, and I hope you got encouraged, and as always, I'm going to give God the last word. You guys have a good day. God bless. I'm going to read from the New Testament in uh, the Gospel according to St. John chapter 6, verses 47 through 58. You guys have a good day. God bless. The Bible says, and this is Jesus' words, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for my life, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us, give us flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh... And drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by, my, by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. That is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Amen. God bless.